the 1,100-year-old Native American dugout canoe that was excavated from the Pinellas County shoreline of Tampa Bay on March 1st of 2011 underwent some major maintenance in August as part of its preparation for eventual public display. The dugout canoe found at the Whedon Island Preserve was made from a single pine tree without the use of metal tools, but rather by the ancient method of burning, charring, and scraping with an adze or similar tool. It was over 40 feet long and had to be cut into four sections to allow for careful excavation and to fit into a solution-filled tank specially built for the preservation process. The wooden canoe needs to soak in a mixture of polyethylene glycol, which is a wax-based substance that penetrates the wood structure and replaces the areas of the canoe that are waterlogged. A small water heater maintains the solution at 120 degrees, which keeps the polyethylene glycol in a liquid state and helps the wood to better absorb the preservative. This process is expected to take up to two years, after which the canoe will be removed from the liquid and be allowed to dry. The liquid polyethylene glycol, which has soaked into the artifact, will then harden and reinforce the wood, which would otherwise crack and deteriorate in the drying process. In the months since the canoe's March excavation, an algae bloom had developed in the soaking tank, probably due to peat from which the canoe was extracted, still clinging to the wood despite an initial cleaning. The algae problem was anticipated, but not to the degree it occurred. And this had to be corrected since algae mixed in with the polyethylene glycol would prevent equal absorption of a preservative solution into the wood. Christopher Hunt, an archaeology graduate student at the University of South Florida, has performed weekly maintenance for the project, checking the solution level and temperature, as well as adding treatment chemicals. We had done some, uh, some experimental processes of controlling algae inside with, with the canoe process. Um, we don't have the ability to have large budget to be able to afford the kind of chemicals that most curators use in the, uh, in the process, so we had to kind of develop our own methods to, uh, to control the algae, and uh, we finally found one. Uh, we decided that uh, the, the best hopes of the process, make sure it's successful from here on out, was to kind of start things almost from scratch, so we decided to clean the tank. With a new strategy in hand, the consensus was reached that it would be best to make a fresh start. It was going to be a big, messy job, and help would be needed, so a call went out to local archaeology organizations for volunteers. We've got volunteers from the University of South Florida, from the Public Archaeology Network, and from Central Gulf Coast Archaeological Society have been here in tremendous force. I sent a simple email, email out, I thought I'd get three or four people, and I got an army of people. So there's tremendous volunteer support behind this project. As the soaking tank was draining, the sections of canoe were carefully removed so they could be gently cleaned with water to remove algae and any remaining peat still attached to the wood. The PVC grill at the bottom of the tank, which held the canoe sections up off the bottom, was removed and cleaned, as were the mesh window screens placed underneath the canoe to catch any parts of the canoe that might fall off during the curation process. Samples of the algae and peat were saved for further research that may help future preservation efforts. The inside walls and bottom of the tank itself needed a thorough scrub down to remove algae and fight any reinfestation. Satisfied that all the elements of the soaking tank were as clean as possible, they were then returned to the tank and the process of refilling the tank began with an algicide added to the solution. These sections of the artifact were then placed back in the tank to return to the state of slowly absorbing the polyethylene glycol preservative that will strengthen the canoe when it is dried and reassembled to its full length for public display at the Whedon Island Preserve Cultural and Natural History Center, which is tentatively scheduled for the spring of 2014. In the meantime, an interpretive exhibit about the prehistoric canoe and its excavation is in development and expected to be available to the public sometime in the spring of 2012. From the time of the initial exploratory examination of the artifact back in 2007 to the full excavation in March of 2011 and all through the canoe's preservation process, 
to its final public display, many community partners will have helped recover and restore this important piece of our history. We have many partners in this process. We've got the uh, AWARE, which is the uh, Alliance for Wheaton Island Archaeological Research and Education. We've got the University of South Florida. We have the Central Gulf Coast Archaeological Society, the Florida Anthropological Society, and the Florida Public Archaeology Network. We've also had the, uh, the Friends of Wheaton Island. We have uh, the, Wheaton, the Wheaton Island Center itself. We have the Pinellas County government to thank. Uh, it's just some additional sponsors. And of course, the volunteers that have helped along the entire step of the way have been here in tremendous force. For more information and updates on the dugout canoe, you can visit the website for the new partner at the Whedon Island Preserve, the Alliance for Whedon Island Archaeological Research and Education, or AWARE. Please go to awire.org.